So this is um, a bit of a lightning talk, pretty quick, um, and it's trying to introduce the idea of LLM agents, what they are, and how we can kind of get these large language model-driven applications. And specifically, we're looking at how this works in Kubernetes, but most of the talk is about just what are these agents and how do they make language model-driven applications. So my name is Callum. I'm currently in my final year of engineering science at the University of Toronto, um, where I'm doing research into language models for software engineering tasks like automatic issue resolution, as well as event-driven and serverless systems. As of two weeks ago, I'm a CNCF ambassador, so that's fun. Um, and I'm a Knative eventing maintainer and UX lead, as well as contributing to the Cloud Events project. And next summer, I'll be starting at Red Hat as a software engineer working with the serverless team, so that'll be fun. Um, so as we all know um, by now, a couple years ago, ChatGPT came out, and it's really revolutionized how you build apps. Um, specifically, it's a new way for users to interact with applications, which before they had to like enter things like buttons or click, and now it's a text-based interaction, and there's a statistical model that's able to take understanding from the text and do something. And this is great, and it makes really rich interactions, but it also leads to a lot of challenges um, in terms of how do we build applications around these interactions. Specifically, questions like how do we actually make sure the information this model is giving us is correct? Um, even if it's correct, how is it the most up-to-date? It might have been correct yesterday, but is it still correct today? And then another one, which I think is really interesting, is um, can we go beyond what I'm calling read type interactions to include write type interactions? So I'm just going to clarify what the, I mean by that quickly. So a read type interaction is something where the user is trying to get or summarize some information, but it's not updating any state of the application. So this is where we've seen a lot of language model applications so far. You ask it a question, it gives you an answer with some information, but it's not changing anything. And so we still have like traditional interfaces for making a post on social media or sending an email. It's not being done by a generative AI anything, um, mostly because so far we've seen read type interactions. For example, I might ask a question in my model. Um, this is going to be in the demo later. I might ask, how has the trend in average resource consumption changed over the past few months from my application? And what impact might this have on my team's cloud bill? Here, it's going to have to retrieve some information and tell me about it and summarize it for me, but it's not going to change anything. By contrast, I can also have write type interactions. And this is where we're updating the state of our application or we're changing something about the system or taking an action. So similar to our earlier example, we might say, you know, based on the average resource consumption over the past few months from my application, try and reduce my costs. And here we might want the model to go and turn off a server or change um, what type of node I'm using to run some workloads to reduce the costs. And so these two different types of interactions um, lead to like very di big differences in terms of how we build applications around language models, which is why I think it's good to distinguish between them. So um, the big question is, how do we improve the performance for our apps? And one of the first solutions that we saw, um, which the previous talk was about, is retrieval augmented generation. So I'm going to give a quick summary of how that works for the people who weren't here in the previous talk, and then we're going to move into the agents. So retrieval augmented generation can basically be summed up in this diagram. Um, this skips all the details, but the idea is the user gives some prompt to the system. There's some kind of information retrieval system which adds information into that prompt. All of that's given to the language model, and the language model is able to respond now. But it's got some extra information to make that response more accurate. And this solves a lot of those first two problems. So checking if the information is correct, well, the ret information retrieval is going to give me correct information. If, it's up, if the information retrieval is able to give me recent information, it'll be up to date as well. But crucially, this actually doesn't solve everything. So if the user's asking for some kind of compound information, where it's something I can retrieve the first part of the information and some other separate piece of information, but I need to combine them in some way, I'm still trusting a statistical model to do that combination correctly. For example, maybe i am got some kind of price per usage that the user's asking what the cost of something's going to be. And my retrieval is able to tell me how much they're using and what the price is per usage. I still have to trust the language model to do that math correctly and give them a correct price. But it's fundamentally statistical prediction, so there's no guarantee that's correct. Also, any of the right type interactions. Retrieval augmented generation is only retrieving state. It's not updating anything. So right interactions are just not covered by retrieval augmented generation. And this is where language model agents come in. The idea of an agent comes from AI research going back decades, and it's just, I pulled this definition from Google with the bold are mine. It's a system that's able to take in information about its environment, so that's similar to reg, 
but crucially, it's able to take actions to accomplish a goal. Um, and LLM agents are just an agent where the decision making is powered by a language model. And so if we want to look at how this works in a system, we'll have kind of our agent server, which is our, you know, our Python code that calls it to the language model, um, seen here. But there's some new pieces. Specifically, it's able to call out to tools as well. And these tools take those actions for us. And sometimes it calls out to other agents. So there's some design patterns we see called multi-agent systems. I'm not going to talk about it too much, but you can think about agents calling each other as like a fancy tool, but it's also powered by Gen AI. And eventually the agent can decide it's done and stop. And so there's an end state as well. So let's focus on the tool, since this is really where the magic happens. If we go into the tool calling, we can use the tool calling to solve a lot of those problems. So we can retrieve information. I kind of think of this as it's like LLM driven retrieval augmented generation, since the LLM is able to decide what information it wants to retrieve after seeing the prompt. For example, if I make that request for like something about the resource usage of my app, it can decide it needs to know what the resource usage was and then call a tool to get that information. Calculating information, so that compound information problem of like usage times price, we can have a tool that can calculate that for us. Or updating information state, maybe we want to store that state, like that price right now into a database to say that this is what the price was when these are asked. Um, or it can take an action, for example, turning off a server to save costs. Um, and the way it actually works is we have to describe the tools to the language model. And so the key things that are highlighted, we need to tell it what the function's called, and then we need to tell it what the parameters are for this function. And then we describe it, like the type of those parameters, and which ones are required. So this is just from OpenAI's documentation and this, um, for a function that tells you the weather in a city. And so the location's required, since that, which makes sense in this case. And what you get back from the model is they set this like, array of tool calls it wants to call, and it's going to tell you what the name of the function is, as well as what the arguments are to the function. And those arguments are going to match that parameters that you described before. And so this lets us build these applications. And one of the things that happens when people build applications is often these tool calls are just functions which make an API call and return the result to the LLM. Um, and so a good way to adopt LLM agents into existing systems is to just use your API endpoints and make a little wrapper that can make the call between the LLM format that you have and whatever your API endpoint is. Um, and then only build new tools for endpoints if you actually need it. So the big question is, when do I need it? And this is where I come to like a very simple design methodology for these agents. First of all, figure out what your use case is. Then um, think about which endpoints or services you have that might be relevant to the use case. And then for these, if you're missing anything that is obvious for your use case, you might need to build a new endpoint or make a new service or something. And if you're building anything new for tools, I think that's really a great use case for service, server, Canadian services or any kind of serverless compute because these tools are going to be infrequently called. Um, and they're going to be called kind of at the will of the language model, which really works well for the serverless like, um, workload type. Then map all these endpoints into the tool calling format and evaluate it. And as you evaluate it, basically you're just testing with different prompts and seeing how it fails. So if it calls the wrong tools or it doesn't call the right tools, you need to adapt the tool descriptions as needed. So you have to describe what the tool is. Or maybe you need to change the system prompt. If it doesn't correctly call your tools, then your tool parameter descriptions, so you can describe each of the individual parameters, you need to change those. Um, or maybe change which parameters are exposed to the language model. If you're exposing dozens of these parameters for a single function call, it's probably going to hallucinate, and you might want to simplify the interface to the language model. And if it doesn't have necessary information or fails to accomplish some of the subtasks to accomplish your task, you're missing some tools, and you need to add them. And so in this way, um, we can solve all these challenges before. Information is correct. We just call a tool to retrieve information. If we need to make sure our information is up to date, again, tool to retrieve information. For the right type interactions, we can call tools to accomplish these right type interactions. And so we have a small demo of how this works. Um, I'm just going to move over to this tab. And basically, we're just asking this question we've been using the, throughout the talk of how has the trend in cost due to the average resource consumption changed over the past four months? And what impact might this have for my team's cloud bill? So if I run this, we'll see it calls an average resource consumption tool, which tells it what the average resource consumption was. And then it's able to map this into calls to this resource cost calculator tool, which calculates the cost for a specific type of resource for a single month for an amount of usage. So it will be only CPU or only memory for only July, as an example. And so you can see 
it knew to call the resource cost calculator tool eight times since I've got two types of resource and four months. And then this way it's able to accurately answer my problem. And if I was actually trying to build a system around this, I'd probably want to test other similar types of questions and see if it's missing any tools. Um, so that's 10 minutes, so time's up. Thank you, everyone. And we can chat throughout Keep Coming for the questions.